I'm Val McInnes, and I'm going to be talking about the Iranian protests that happened when I was a young person living in Stromness. When I was growing up, the first I knew about anything nuclear was um, the campaign for nuclear disarmament, because my father was very heavily involved with CND in the 60s. And so I grew up as a young person. I can honestly say I had a great fear in myself, because I was convinced that we were going to have a kind of atomic bomb at some point during my life. And as a young person, I had a lot of anxiety that was probably never spoken out. So when I first heard, I remember coming home one day and my dad saying that somebody had gone up to the mill at Kirsten with a Geiger counter and had gone wild. And I didn't know what a Geiger counter was. And of course, the questions followed and this word uranium came up and I didn't know what uranium was. Um, And slowly the situation uncovered that at that point there was a big company, Rio Tinto Zinc, that had been interested in coming up here and test boring and drilling holes down into the rock. And I'd heard it was happening at the mill of Kirsten. And when I heard about Yesnavi, well, that was just a big tragedy in my head. And slowly these pictures of what open cast uranium mining might look like began to be drawn in my head, in my imagination, and picking up on snippets of conversation over the time and getting more and more interested and concerned, um, I became more involved and I wanted to know more. I'm the youngest daughter of Ian and Jean McInnes from Stromness, and folk will know my dad because he was the art teacher at school and he was also a local politician and involved in very many uh, Stromness and Arcadian uh, stories and his involvement with the uranium protest was enormous because I think he felt that the whole life of Orkney was at risk from potential uranium mining um, not only his beloved cliffs where he would come out here at Yesnaby um, to paint and very often stay the whole afternoon or the whole weekend if we could get away with it out here. Um, But the farming and the fishing and the natural way of life that was part of what he grew up with and what we were growing up with was suddenly at risk from some outside unknown threat, really. It was quite unknown and it was very difficult to get a lot of information out of the companies at the time. The part I remember most was the silent protest in Cuthwell and the build-up to that was um, trying to make as many people in Orkney aware of what was going on. So it wasn't just, it was school-wide. I was involved at school at that time and um, in the last years at Stroms Academy and talking to my peers and explaining and asking questions. And what I think was in the, the protest was most about my fear at that time was growing up or coming back to Orkney and finding a desolate, dusty, poisonous atmosphere and nowhere to go walking. So the silent protest was most effective because it was silent. And I do remember at the time finding it very hard to walk on a protest and not speak because I used to quite like to chatter as a teenager. Um, But it was very solemn, and it was slow, and it was highly effective. We just walked through the street, stood outside the cathedral, and um, there was some publicity at the time. I do remember it caught the attention of the newspapers, and it was successful in that the commission eventually listened to what was, I think, also an environmental victory for that time, that the way of life and the quality of life that we have up here would have been completely destroyed had, had that gone ahead. My, my feeling as a, as a young person, I was still concerned about the nuclear threat and about atomic nuclear threat because my father had said 
you know, what do they, what do you think they use uranium for? What do they use? Um, uh, you, you know, what what's the half life of uranium? These were all terms I had no, no, no clue about, and to discover that the half life of uranium was something like seven hundred million years, and that um, uranium could be used to as as an ingredient in a nuclear bomb was was terrifying to me. So there was only one thing to do, and that was to go on the street. And my father strongly believed in the democratic process, and I think that was a victory for democracy at that time because there was such a cross-section of the community involved. Um, I was just a young person, but I do remember that there were people from all political standpoints and all walks of life who, who protested. And the big sign outside Stromness that my dad had um, painted, keep Orkney green and attractive, not white and radioactive, was up for so many years. And I would come home and check to see it was still there because I felt very strongly that it had to be something that never disappeared. Um, sadly, it is no more at the roundabout in Stromness. But I do feel that there's a, a, an understanding that that's stays about environmentalism and the importance of keeping botany green and you never know at the time how events in your life shape you as a human being um, several years later I found myself actually in Poland at the time of the Chernobyl explosion and I was in I was pregnant at the time and I remember coming back to Orkney to have my baby and being interviewed at the time about, again, a nuclear situation and and being involved in that and, and bringing awareness to the, the idiocy of still having these um, nuclear power stations and, and fighting for that. And also it impacted me most strongly, I would say, environmentally. I've become a very, um, I would say environmentally aware as a as an adult and much more um, involved in the impact that we have on the planet, that we're living together on one planet. It's not one island, it's it's all of us together and the importance of fighting for a quality of life for the future, for young folk here and for, you know, we could say that the mistakes of our generation, my generation, are playing out now for these young children. Um, but I'm a firm believer in clean energy and in up in Orkney, working towards being off grid here and having solar panels and a windmill. And um, we do drive a car, but it's an electric car. So that stayed with me. And I think thinking back, reading back on what my father wrote at the time about um, this idea that nuclear power was uh, some kind of clean, contained, safe way forward. And he was arguing that the green idea back in Orkney was was muddy and full of manure and the idea of regeneration, you know, putting your dung on the fields, that's that's what's been in Orkney for for centuries and that's the kind of life in a way we we, we don't we shouldn't lose. We we need to stay in contact with that.